Hi, and welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast. You're listening to, this is the Occupy Midian On Location Report uh, from the Weekend of Horrors in Germany. And special thanks to Kay Pinot of uh, Deadline Magazine uh, for letting, giving us permission to re, sort of rebroadcast the audio from this interview with Russell Charrington. Uh, a few little quick things on this interview. Um, so he had said uh, that Ann Bobby first said Occupy Midian to the crowd, and that's true. Uh, she said that on the Clive Barker podcast first she came up with the name uh, and then sort of said that to people at the bar and said it to the crowd before the screening. So, yeah, she sort of, you know, she ran with it. Everybody ran with it. Russell started the website, and and uh, and um, this is the other thing. Uh, Roger Boys, uh, Jose Letao, and myself all talked together about putting together this Facebook group, and we all put it. You know, we all talked it through, and Roger, you know, started the the group. So anyway, uh, here it is. Enjoy, um, and it's about ten minutes long. Okay. All right, Russell. Nice to have you here in Germany, and uh, you're presenting the Kabar Cup of Nightbreed. And um, can you tell us uh, how you got involved in the project? Sure, yeah. Uh, I, I, a lot like people, I'd always talked to Clive, and I'd always heard that there was a different version of Nightbreed. So I wanted to see it. And then I, through my visits to Clive Barker's home, heard that there'd been a, a discovery of some rough footage so basically, I went over to visit Clive to do some other work on a different project, and I said to Mark Miller that works for Clive, I said, the footage that was discovered that was showed at Horror Hound, could I take it home with me so I could watch it? And I basically took it back to the UK and uh, watched it and, it and found it to be unwatchable, quite difficult, and I basically decided at that point in time that... I had the first uh, two drafts of the script, and I thought, well, you know, let, let's have a go at this. Let's try and restore it. Let's try and put it back together like a, a big jigsaw puzzle and see what we can do with it. And I basically made a three-hour cut of Nightbreed using two work prints and a DVD release. And that, that took me about six months working with an editor called Jimmy Johnson, and we went through that process, came out the other side, I took it to America uh, you know, six months later, and Clive watched it. And what did he say? Uh, he didn't say much, he cried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not unhappy tears, but tears of happiness, because he knew that this existed. And then no. we, had a, we talked about it, and I went back to the UK, and, Cl and I got an email from Clive saying, I've got some notes about the movie, I've watched it two more times. And he actually just wanted me to make really little, tiny, minuscule changes. But, yeah. but you were basically right on. What you put together? Uh, four changes that were nothing. One was a tiny edit at the beginning. When you watch the film, it says Boone, Boone to introduce the character Boone. In my first cut, it said that three times, and Clive wanted one taken off. He wanted me to move one sequence when Boone's tripping. He wanted me to put a piece of music when Laurie goes to visit him in the mortuary. And he wanted me to put a piece of music on the end. That was it. They were his only changes. For people who haven't seen the Kabar cut right now, what would you say is the biggest difference between the Kabar cut and uh, the theatrical version? Well, this, this version is, uh, this version, I, I call it Gone with the Wind with Monsters. It's actually now a love story. And the biggest, the biggest revelation is Laurie. She's a completely different character. You see her in much more detail. You learn so much more about her. You also, Decker is a revelation because we find more things about him. But we spend spend about 50-60% more time in Midian and we also learn about the sons of the free the, the people that come along at the end and want to destroy Midian that, that is developed so much more <coughs> and the ending is very very different but I, spoilers I'm not going to tell you that <laughs> okay. and um, can you go on a, a little bit about the legal problems uh, regarding uh, uh, Nightbreed and uh, the uh, negotiations with Morgan Creek and the, what the status right now is sure the, it's never so much has been a legal problem as a fact that no one could ever find the footage the footage had disappeared Morgan Creek said they didn't have it and uh, it, it was trying to find it and that's what held it back for years 
the kind of position we found ourselves was we created the cut and then we asked, had to ask their permission to screen it and Morgan Creek saw it and said yep you can go and screen it and, but their position originally was they didn't think anyone would want to watch it they thought it was a 22 year old movie that nobody cared about and then we screened it once and, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people want to watch the film it sells out 1300 in London, sells out in Barcelona, Dublin, Sheffield, sold out two screenings in LA, sold out in Toronto, sold out in Chicago. People just want to watch this movie. Today in Germany, you know, uh, when it's screened, a lot of the people that are here today are here to watch Nightbreed. Yeah, also, um, the fans, like you said, have an important role to play in this. And uh, one of the actors came up with the idea for the Occupy Median. Uh, in the first screening of the, of the version one of this cut in North Carolina, Anne Bobby called out to the audience to Occupy Median. So when we went off stage, I bought the URL Occupy Median, and a guy called Ryan Danhauser went and started a Facebook group, and they were the very genesis of like, the promotion campaign. So the Occupy Midian name came from Anne. She just called to the audience to Occupy Midian to make this happen. And a lot of the reason why I'm here today is because of the audience, because of the demand to watch this movie, because of the love that people have for Midian, for the Nightbreed, you know, and the story of Cabal. Yeah. You also went back and corrected one mistake or, yeah, obvious mistake which was done, yeah. uh, but producers back then, they redapt in the theatrical version um, Jack Bradley. Sure. That was really important to me to, to put his voice back in. It's really important for me to put lots of voices back in and do lots. I've done absolutely, the biggest work I've done is actually in sound, in design, in sound, in music, in making it work, because the work went really terrible sound. So, you know, it was kind of like, that was a difficulty. But Doug, yeah, Doug Bradley came to where I was and he basically re-recorded, you know, his voice to the film. And I created a little uh, three-minute piece that I put on YouTube called Doug Doug that lots of people saw. And that was the first time that lots of people knew there was a different Nightbreed and that potentially they could watch it. And we did that even before Occupy Million. Yeah. And uh, what were we saying? Um, how much fan reactions you get from the screenings and how far is uh, the crowdfunding process for the restoration? Yeah, some of the, legally I can't crowdfund it and legally I can't sell copies okay. right. it has to come from the studio the studio makes their decision on, on funding this by knowing that X amount of people will buy the movie so what you can do if you want to buy Nightbreed is go on Occupy Midian on Facebook or the web and sign the petition and say I would pay 30 euros for a blue Ray of Nightbreed, and that's what ultimately makes the studio decide to fund the, the, the end part of the restoration. But I know now from, from talking to Morgan Creek that they're really interested in doing this, and, I, and it's my hope that this time next year we will see, a, you know, a version of Nightbreed, you know, that we can buy. What will be the um, next step um, to the uh, DVD and Blu-ray? Is it possible um, to maintain all the original footage somehow? Well, what will happen next is, is a full telecine digital restoration or a restoration of the work print that we, which is quite expensive, about 50,000 euros to do from, that. From, from the elements. So from the elements that we have. Worst case scenario, we can make a DVD quality piece, but ultimately, you know, we want the original film, but we need to find that. And this is a bit like Indiana Jones looking for something in that warehouse. But we, we're trying our best. It will happen. I believe it will happen. So. But uh, you're, you're uh, determined to uh, crack, o crack open the warehouse and yeah, search well, I've, got, I've got this far, and people are watching it, people are loving it, and, 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 it's, and it's got a second life. In 2012, thousands of people have been watching Nightbreed, and that's wonderful. And being here talking to you and sharing it with all these people is a great experience. Yeah. Would you think that Clive might want to go back to Midian and do another Nightbreed movie? 
I think that there are two schools of thought. There's a Nightbreed movie, and I have an, a great idea for a Nightbreed movie, and we have an idea for a Nightbreed TV series. And all you need to do is think of the X-Men in the 80s and think about the Nightbreed, and that's maybe where a TV series would go. And also, <clears throat> it seems to be the right time, because uh, if you see the uh, uh, amount of success shows like Walking Dead, yeah. Uh, generate on AMC and. Um... Hey, we, I think it would be a great success as an episodic thing on TV. I, I think that that's more likely to be the place where it ends up. I mean, we have ideas for a film and a TV series. So, and and there are even discussions about comic books and other things. People are really interested in Nightbreed again, and that's thanks to everybody that wants to watch it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.